discipleship is not just teaching, but it's also doing. Hence why Peter was able to do what Christ did. I thought about that. People say, oh, Christ was the only man that was able to walk on water. And stop. Actually, Jesus was walking on water, but Peter also walked on water too. Amen? How? How did Peter walk on water? How did Peter do what Christ commanded him? Because a disciple is not just a student learning from a teacher. A disciple is becoming what his master said. A, bit, a disciple says, I will not only listen to my master or listen to my teacher, but I also will do what my teacher does. So Peter stepped out on that water and he walked. Did he not? When we look at that scriptures, he walked on water. And the only reason why he began to sink was what? He started to look at the wind and he started to look at, the, uh, look at his surroundings. And then fear started to come over him. And fear, hear me out in the Holy Ghost. Fear cancels out faith. So when you embrace fear, you're literally inviting the kingdom of darkness. And we'll talk about that in a second. But you're inviting an element in which God never gave us that. God does not give you guys fear. Hear me on the Holy Spirit. He never gives us fear. And, and I'm going to get a little more specific because I don't want to do any of us a disservice, any of you guys a disservice, and not give you guys the full word of God. I don't even want to be that person. It's not because I don't love anyone here. I love everyone here. Truthfully, I really do. But I don't want to start changing the word of God to 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 not offend people. And hear me on the Holy Ghost, because this is what the Holy Ghost, this is the Holy Ghost, guys. He's telling me he authentically loves us so much that he's willing to tell us things that will offend us. Like he even told Peter when he was sinking. What did he say right after he started sinking? He said, oh, ye of little faith. That's basically saying you have little faith. You started right but then you started to not have faith. What happened? Why are you sinking now? You started off walking on water. You started off doing the miracles. You started off believing the right way. But what caused you to start sinking? Hear me in the Holy Ghost. This is talking. When we start to doubt in our lives, guys, and we start to lose our focus, Peter's focus was on who and whom alone? Jesus. He was on Jesus. And at that moment, what happened? When his, when his what do you call? Here, we can go to it real quick. Let's just go to it. Matthew 14, chapter 22. Chapter what? Yeah, 22. Yeah, 14 and 22. I believe that's where it's at. Sorry, verse 22. And everyone says they can say amen. Chapter 14. Yeah. And, and I, and I want to make sure in the spirit, the Holy Ghost is saying, don't, don't be mad. Please don't. He wants to give us the whole package. He wants to make sure that you don't think that, oh, it's just the fruits of the spirit and that there's no pruning. Right. Like we look at a tree, we say, oh, beautiful tree. And Jesus said, a tree that's connected to the true vine will bear fruit. And when it bears fruit, what else will happen? He said, because he's a vine dresser, he cuts. He cuts off things off of us so that we can grow more fruit. Let God do the, like, don't make the word of God to a point where it's like, oh, I'm so offended by this word of God. I can't take it, right? See, God wants us to know the truth about his word, how it really does set us free, amen? So it says, Matthew 14, Jesus walks on water. It says, immediately after this, 
Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. While he sent the people home after sending them home, he, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. Okay, the strong wind had came. All right. It says about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. Now, we know who the prince of the air is. Amen? Strong winds started coming. They just started. You guys understand. When storms and stuff come, we know where it, if you really understand where that's coming from, you know where it's coming from. And so you could say, okay, all right, I see this, right? But at that time, they weren't discerning. They didn't even know about that. They didn't even understand that aspect of when your environment changes, right? But look how Jesus steps into that. He goes, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. Not in the water, on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost, right? But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid. I'm going to hold on to that just for a second because the Holy Ghost told me. We are in Christ, guys. Jesus does not want us to be afraid of anything. Hear me out. Fear, the Bible says that fear clearly, guys, is not of God. Amen? And I know that I know that the world that we live in and the things that we've seen over the last few months have been very, very, very um, uh, they've been very hard for some of us, okay? Very hard for some of us to, to, to understand very hard for some of us to comprehend. But I heard in the spirit, the Lord told me, none of us, no one here needs to be afraid of anything or anyone. None of us needs to be afraid. And the Lord told me something about, about fear that we need to make sure we address as we keep going on. Remember we wrote about the Pro Proverbs and Proverbs says that the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning or the foundation of wisdom, the foundation of understanding. It didn't say the fear of the spiritual world. It didn't say the fear of man. It didn't say the fear of policies and politics. It didn't say the fear of COVID-19. It didn't say the fear of vaccinations. It didn't say the fear of any of this stuff, right? It didn't say the fear of some other man coming to rob and kill me. It, I mean, you know what the Bible, Jesus clearly said that Fear the one that can destroy your body and soul. But don't fear anything else. Because at the end of the day, no one else, no one else is going to judge your soul but God. Jesus is trying to give us an understanding right now. He says, don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I am here. Jesus says this right to the disciples in 27. He spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. 28 says, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to, to you walking on the water. Look how bold Peter is, right? He says, yes, come, Jesus said. God is pleased by faith, guys. I'm telling you right now. The Bible says clearly that faith Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, right? Through the world that we see, the unseen was all created by that. Jesus said, or excuse me, the writer of Hebrews describes that it is impossible to please God without what? Without faith. So see, in that moment, he has a faith. He said, here's his condition. This is Peter's condition. This is how we do it. 
if it's really you, then what? He says, tell me to come to you walking on the water. He says, yes, come, Peter said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. What? What's wrong? Oh, it says, yes, come. Sorry. It says, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, come on. Catch this, guys. When you, listen, hear me in the Holy Ghost, guys. You start off right. You step out of the boat. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. You see the supernatural. You know, hey, this stuff is really real. I'm going to step out on the boat. I'm going to do something. God is going to use me in this way. Okay, awesome. And you believe and your eyes are focused on Jesus. You're doing things that to other people, when they see it, they're going to say, that's not possible. Not possible. You tell them about your testimony. Yeah, I walked on water. I did these things. Oh, really? You started with faith. But how did Kona Kashande de Mose? How did the lack of faith come in? How did fear come in? When you get your eyes off Jesus. I'm trying to speak to everybody here. Because the Holy Ghost told me, do not be afraid anymore. He does not want one person, even whoever watches this broadcast, whoever watches this video, he doesn't want one person in here to ever be afraid. Period, point blank. Not of any person, not of anything, not of any whatever. Because hear me clearly, what you guys are battling is something that is not, it's not seen like the way we see it. It's not seen with our eyes. It's felt in our emotions. It's felt in our mind. It's felt in what, so what happened? He took his eyes off Jesus, amen. And what did he feel? He says, but when he saw, right, he's like looking off whatever distance. Now the environment starts to change, right? He says, but when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was what? Terrified. He was terrified and began to sink. Guys, do y'all understand this supernatural what's being said in the spirit right now? That when you focus... And keep your eyes on Christ, off Christ and on other things or surroundings, especially, especially the things that are causing what? Causing calamity. You allow fear to come in and now you begin to sink. God wants us, when I said this in the spirit, God wants us to have the whole package. Here's the whole package, guys. Let's keep reading for a second. It says, so Peter went over the side of the boat, walked on water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Hallelujah. He says, you have so little faith. He didn't say you kind of have a little bit like an ounce. No, he says, so little faith. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Any moment you've had a little faith, God is saying, why did you doubt me? Why did you doubt me? Why did you doubt me in this situation? Why did you doubt me over there? Why did you doubt me when I couldn't do this? Why did you doubt me? That's what the Holy Spirit should be saying to some of us. I've been there. I'm living it. I'm literally, guys, I'm telling you right now, I'm living that. I felt like I was doing something. Then I felt like I was sinking very quickly because I started letting my environment dictate how the reality and the Lord was saying no you're supposed to walk on water not sink in it I've given you the power to do that and we can take that through our lives and see hey what's going on in our lives where we're keeping our eyes off Jesus and more focused on the atmosphere of things and rather than the reality is that we're supposed to what the just shall walk not by what? Sight, but by faith. The just shall live by faith. We're supposed to be living by this truth 
that Christ is that real reality. That he does not want us to be blind or ignorant of this truth. He wants you to see and know, hey, take courage. I am here. He's here with you. He's here with you in those moments. He's here with you when you feel disappointed. He's here with you when you don't feel like being whatever God has called you to be. He's saying in that moment, I'm with you. I'm with you at school. I'm with you at work. I'm with you at the, at the office. I'm with you wherever you're going to be. But don't sink, amen? Keep your eyes on Christ. Stop making the environment or let's say what the other people say, amen? See, the beautiful thing is he got out of the boat. Come on. And I've been in the boat before. I know what it feels like to be in this boat of tradition, this boat of like, oh, it's only little thing. This is what we're all about. And then the Holy Ghost starts telling me and saying, walk on water, do the miracle, do the miraculous stuff. Let not just faith come out of your lips, but actually let it permeate through your life. Walk on water, like actually do things that show whether or not you have evidence that Christ is really working in your lives. See, the enemy wants to keep you guys in the boat and get you all scared and get you all afraid and get you all caught up in the what ifs. If I drown, if I get out of this situation, then I'm going to go sinking. While the Holy Ghost, Jesus is standing from afar off and saying, come out, walk on water, do the miraculous things I've called you to do in this life. I don't want you guys to be afraid. Hear me, Holy Ghost, because I was holding it back. The Lord says, tell them right now, guys, Christ does not want you to operate in fear. No fear in this household in the mighty name of Jesus. No more fear. No more fear of rejection. No more fear of doubt. No more fear of anything. Hear me in the spirit. No more fear of, oh, how is this going to happen? Or how's that? Christ wants you guys to know how special you are in him. You know, when the Bible says perfect love, cast out fear, perfect love, Christ's love. Perfect love should be casting out all the fear and all the anxiety that we deal with on a daily basis. You have fear of getting a bad grade or fear of how people are going to be talking about you, how people are going to perceive you. There's fears that we have just sharing the gospel. You don't think there's something that jumps into people's mind, make them think, ah, I don't want to share the gospel now. Fear to pray for people, fear to do certain things. Fear, fear, fear. Fear to step out of that boat and really do what God has called you to do. And I'm going to tell you something, the Holy Spirit, because now the Holy Spirit is talking to me. He's saying the wind and the waves are the intimidation of the enemy. That's who's controlling you. He's making you think that you're not capable of doing what Christ has called you to do. He's trying to intimidate you to make you think that you won't be able to reach other children or other families or, or people in your circle. He trying to make me believe, hey, stop recording, stop teaching, stop preaching. It's not making a difference in anybody's life. That's what he will make you think instead of actually do what you are really called to do. And as be a servant of the most high God. We don't serve fear, amen? Christ has called you for love. Christ has called you, he said, perfect love cast out fear. So the perfect love that comes from Christ, that's not just something that is felt, amen? Like I feel love, I pour into love, right? But you also got to walk in this love. You can't just say it. You got to actually do it too. You got to fill it all out. Amen. So look at the perfect love. Look what happens. Save me, Lord. This is perfect love. He shouted. Jesus immediately what? Reached out and grabbed him. Did Jesus say, oh, look at you. You ain't got no faith. Go, just go and drown with the fishes, boy. Right? <laughs> right? No. Because Christ is love. He, here's the thing. God does not want us to sink. But if we do, know that he's right there. He pulls us right out. Amen. See, we don't understand. See, we think we're doing this thing alone. And Christ is saying, no, you're not alone. He says, fear not, for I am with you. 
Amen. Fear not. For I am with you. I'm with you, Jay. I'm with you, May. I'm with you, Jeremiah. I'm with you, Mikhail. I'm with you, Naima. Like, I'm with you. I'm really with you guys. I'm in, I'm with you in those moments where you feel like you're sinking. I used to feel like that. When I was in a state of depression, I would be sinking in my bed. I feel like the bed was literally eating me. I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out. And it's something that just keep telling me, keep sleeping, keep sleeping, keep sleeping. Then I realized that was not the voice of God. And I struggled that for years. People used to always ask, like, Jay, Jay, why don't you go to school? Why don't you, why be late to school? Because I didn't feel no purpose in it. And then the Holy Ghost had shown me that throughout the years. Yeah, you're battling with depression. But people, let me, let me just get it out in the Holy Ghost. Because this is where... This is where it gets really sensitive for people for my non uh, for my traditional believing confessing Christian. Not my Holy Ghost spirit filled casting out demons Christian. Guys, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat of tradition. Jesus clearly was walking on water. They just said ghost immediately. They labeled him immediately as something that was not really true. Many of us are looking at the supernatural and we just label it however we want to label it instead of actually understand that Christ wants us to know the whole picture. Give us the whole package. 